This is part two of the Math 137 online final exam review. Ready now for problem five. I went ahead, this is once again a triangle problem. And they tell us that side A is one, side B is 10, angle A is 60 degrees. So if I want to draw this, if I call this angle A, angle A is 60 degrees, side A is one. If I call this angle B, I don't know angle B, but I do know side B is 10, and here's C and C. So once again, two sides in an angle, but then the question to know what to do is, is this matching? Do one of the sides or one of the angles have the same letter? In this case, I've got A, side A, and angle A. So it's matching. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to use law of signs, but once again, just like the last problem, I have to check there may be a second triangle. There may be no triangles. So once again, possibilities are no triangle, one triangle, or two triangles. So once again, first thing, actually the only thing I can do is I can try and find angle B. Use law of sines, sine of A over side A, sine of B over side B, and I know <clears throat> Since A is 60 degrees and side A is 1, I don't know angle B, but I do know side B is 10. <coughs> Excuse me. I can solve this for sine B. 10 over 1 times sine of 60 degrees. Grab my calculator, make sure I'm in degree mode. Sine times 10 basically. Once again, I'm not going to round too much. 8.6603. Now to get angle B, of course you take the inverse sine. Let's grab a calculator, inverse sine. You know what my calculator says? error. In other words, this is not an actual angle. What does that mean? First of all, if you actually do this on the test, go back and make sure you didn't make a math error. But if you go back and you did all the math correct and you actually get no angle, then that means the answer is no triangle. All right, on to problem six. Another triangle. Wow, lots of triangles. Let me just write down, once again, they don't draw a picture, but they say side B is five, side C is seven, Angle B is 40. Once again, it looks like we have two sides and an angle. And it's matching. I'm not going to write this again, but you know what this means? It could have zero angle, one angle, or two angles. I mean, zero triangles, one triangle, or two triangles. So let's do the first triangle. Once again, law of sines, let's do B and C. It's our, our only option. So sine of B is 40 degrees over side B. Sine of angle C over side C. We've done this so many times. Let me go ahead. I'm not going to write it down. Let me just 
It's going to be 7 divided by 5 times sine of 40 degrees. Point eight nine nine nine. Now, if I take the inverse sine of that, it says round it to one decimal place, sixty four point one. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it says two decimal places. Sorry about that. Now, once again, I'm going to put this in a box because when I go to see if there's a second triangle, that's going to be my starting off place. So I'll try to put that in the box. Let's go and finish this first triangle. I know angle B. I know angle C. That means angle A must be 180 degrees minus angle B minus angle C. So 180 subtract 40 subtract 64.14, 75.86 degrees. Actually, on my paper, I must have... Uh, I may not round it out correctly. Let me try and be precise because on the test, of course, when I take the inverse sign, yeah, this is a pain because, well, let me just go and finish this. This is why it's good that I check for a partial credit on the test because usually if your mistake is just some kind of rounding error, I give you almost full credit. So I'm going to call this 75.86 degrees angle A. The only thing left now is side A. I'm going to use the law of sines. We'll compare like A and B, so sine of angle A, 75.86 degrees, over side A, and we'll use angle B, sine of 40 degrees, over side B, which is 5. So you do some algebra here should be 5 times sine of 75.86 over sine 40. So looks like 7. Point. There's my first triangle. Now Let's check to see if we have a second triangle. What you always do is the first, the first angle I calculated, remember that's the one you take and you say, instead of this angle C, I might have an alternate angle C. And I get that by taking 180 degrees minus the original angle C. So 180 minus 64.14, So I know angle B is the same for both, 40 degrees. So if this is my new angle C and this is angle B, let's calculate my new angle A, 180 degrees minus angle B minus my new angle C. Twenty-four point one four degrees. 
And that is possible. So it looks like I do have a second triangle. So here are my three angles. I know the two sides, B is five and C is seven. The only thing left to figure out is side A. So let's use law of sines. So sine angle A, sine of 24.14 over side A. I'll go and use B, sine of 40 degrees over side B, which is five. So A, five times, sine of 24.14 over sine of 40. Oops. Oh yeah, I did that, yep, that's correct. Looks like 3.18. So we actually have a second triangle. All right. So I have some more triangle problems. Number seven is another triangle problem. This one actually has a picture. It says, and here's angle B, here's angle C, here's angle A, and it looks like. So what does it have here? An angle with three sides. I have no choice. I have to use law of cosines. And now it's my choice. I'm going to first figure out one of the angles, A, B, or C. It's up to me. I'm just going to go ahead and figure out angle A. So if I want to figure out angle A, you know, there are three laws of cosines, but I'm going to want the one that's A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times a cosine of A. I know everything in this equation except cosine of A. So basically I can solve for cosine of A and therefore find angle A. If I plug the numbers in here, side A is 4, so 4 squared. Side B is 2, 2 squared. Side C is 5, plus 5 squared minus 2 times B times C. This is basically 16 equals 4 plus 25, 29 minus 20. So first thing you do is you subtract 29 from both sides. Then divide both sides by negative 20. So basically you have 13 over 20. And you take the inverse cosine of both sides to get the actual angle. And here it says round to one decimal place. So I think it's 49.5 degrees. So now I have to figure out the remaining two angles. And you have an option here. <clears throat> you can go ahead and use the law of cosines again to figure out, say, angle B, and then use the law of cosines to figure out angle C. And that would be fine, you just do the same thing two more times. However, there is an alternative, and I'm gonna do that now, but be careful, because it's a little tricky, because at this point, I can use the law of sines, but I have two options. I can use the law of sines, so I've already figured out angle A, is 49.5 degrees. So I can figure out angle either C or angle B. And the way the math works is, 
you don't get to choose whichever one you want. For the laws to work correctly in this case, if you're going to use the law of sines, you have to choose the angle opposite the shorter side. So you see angle C, side C is 5, angle B, side B is 2. Therefore, for the laws to work correctly in this case, I need to use the law of sines to find angle B. So I'm going to use sine B over B equals sine A over A. So sine B, side B is 2. Sine of angle A, 49.5 degrees over side A, So if I multiply both sides by 2, I'll take the sine something like 0.37997. Take the inverse sine of both sides. 22.3 degrees. And now, my last angle is C, but C I can just get, <clears throat> since I know A and B now, it's pretty simple. One oh eight point two. All right, so that's a little bit easier than using the law of cosines, but if you can't remember the rules about this, the safest thing to do is when you go and calculate your second angle, just use law of cosines again. You don't have to remember any special rules. All right, one more triangle problem. Wow. So number eight. So here it says you got a triangle, they give us just information. Side A is 3, side B is 8, and angle C is 140 degrees. So what I have here, I have side, side, angle. Now the question is, do I have matching or non-matching? So my angle C, but I have sides A and B. So non-matching, which basically means the only thing that's going to work is law of cosines. You can try law of sines, but it doesn't even work. So you don't have to necessarily remember this. Law of sines won't even work. So the law of cosine, since I know I've given angle C, I have to use the C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times cosine of C. In this case, I know everything here beside C, so I can, A is 3, so 3 squared, B is 8, 8 squared minus 2 times 3 times 8 cosine 140 degrees. So it makes it a little simpler. This is 9 plus 64 minus 48 times cosine 140 degrees. So let's go ahead and just be careful doing your math. 140 degrees cosine times 48 equals, this whole thing is negative plus 64 plus 9. Looks like C squared is 109.770. Take square root of both sides. And it says round it to two decimal places. 
10.48. Now, once I do this, I can add a lot of signs. And once again, let's choose the smallest, the angle opposite the smallest side. So I have 3 and 8. Let's choose 3. So I have sine A over A, sine C over C. I don't know angle A, but I know small a is 3. Sine C, 140 degrees over So multiply both sides by 3, then if I do the calculation, 140 sine times 3 divided by 10.48, 0 0.18400. So A would be the inverse sine of that. 10.60 degrees. So now I can figure out angle B. Since I know the other two angles, minus angle C, which is 10.6 degrees, minus angle C. Oops. That's the length. Angle C is 140 degrees. So angle B should be 29.40. All right, so that was lots of problems using laws of sines and cosines. Hopefully you can keep them all straight. Be careful with your math. They aren't too difficult.